Hi, Carrie here. Let's talk about play for a little bit. So there are two basic forms of play. First play is structured play. And this is play that's goal oriented. And it usually involves following some sort of rules or a process of some sort. Think of it like sports and Lego sets with instructions, puzzles, board games, even games like tag and capture the flag. There's a structure and a process and a goal. Then there's unstructured play. This kind of play is not organized or directed, and it generally doesn't have a defined purpose or goal. Think of it like building a fort with pillows and blankets, slaying dragons with sticks in your backyard, playing dress up, collecting leaves, creating things with popsicle sticks, Legos without instructions. So unstructured play used to be the norm, and it kind of had to be. Families didn't have all the distractions we have today. There weren't countless things just waiting to entertain children. Kids were bored, they had to create something to do. And they actively fixed their problem. And interestingly, they didn't see boredom as an, a problem, but like as an opportunity to create a new adventure. Over time, however, play options for children changed. All of a sudden, programs started popping up in communities geared specifically towards kids. So you had mommy and me classes and music classes and art classes and gym classes and organized youth sports. And many of these starting as early as six months old. And then there became this underlying pressure that if you wanted to set your child up for the best possible chance of success, you had to do it all. And all of a sudden, your packed calendar became in some sort of way like a report card for how good you were as a parent. Now, don't get me wrong. All of these things are great. Structured play, awesome. Unstructured play, awesome. Tons of benefits to both. And our children need both in their lives. The trick is, however, everything in moderation. And this is where a lot of children are getting stuck. So many kids and families have such full schedules, and when there does happen to be a small opening in the schedule, they're so exhausted, they gravitate towards the easy passive forms of entertainment, like TV, video games, scrolling through social media. Does any of this sound familiar? And in all of this, unstructured play took a backseat. And the problem with this is that children are missing out on the enormous developmental opportunities that come from unstructured play. I mean, check this list out. Problem solving, conflict resolution, creativity, imagination, brain development. Are you convinced yet? Sign me up, right? Okay, so how do we jump on the unstructured play bus? Here's five ways. First, create space in your schedule. Make unstructured play a priority in your schedule, not just the leftover time in your schedule. And limit screen time during free time. Especially if your child's used to being on electronics quite a bit, they'll naturally gravitate towards this form of passive entertainment. So limits may need to be placed, especially at the beginning, on everyone as everyone's getting comfortable with this new kind of play. Two, create the environment. To create the environment, surround your child with the tools for unstructured play. Blocks, scarves, Play-Doh, toy animals, spoons, bowls, blankets, pillows, dress-up clothes, kinetic sand, dolls, shovels, boxes. And for older kids, think things like paper, paints, pieces of wood, toolboxes, canvases, art supplies, clay, bags for collecting things, pool noodles, magnifying glasses, a camera, notebook, walkie-talkie. You can check out my absolute hands-down favorite things in my resource tab. Number three, get outside. Just being outside lends itself naturally to exploring and coming up with creative ways to spend your time. Indoors, there's way too many distractions, internet, electronics, that our kiddos' brains may be trained to naturally navigate towards those, which is gonna hinder creativity and exploration. Number four, let go. 
Avoid the urge to try and direct things or clean up or solve problems. Let the play unfold naturally. Let them struggle with being bored or not knowing what to do instantly. Let them get messy. And if this is a tough one for you, find spaces where you're okay of it getting messy and then have clothes set aside specifically for this purpose. Number five, know when to participate and when to step back. Both of these are important. If your child wants you to be a part of the experience, jump in. This is fun quality time together and shows your child you care about what they're doing and spending time with them. Just remember, follow their lead. Also, respect when they want to play by themselves or with a friend. And if there's a disagreement, let them work it out, even if your gut reaction is to jump in and play referee. Remember, these are all learning and growth opportunities for your child. Okay, now here are some ideas for you. For babies, focus on the senses. Let them feel different textures like scarves or stuffed supped animals, leaves, blankets. Let them hear different sounds, rattles, those books with the crunchy, crinkly pages, beautiful music, your voice, read to them. And let them see visually stimulating things, moving scarves, mobiles, blow bubbles for them. And as they get a little older and with your supervision, let them reach out and grab and explore these things. For toddlers and young children, make believe. Be princesses and pirates and astronauts and explorers. Make forts and castles with pillows and blankets. Play with blocks. Give them a blank canvas and finger paint. Make a band with pots and pans and kitchen utensils. Play with water. Use buckets and different scoops like plastic cups and measuring cups and strainers. Explore and play on the playground. Explore the backyard. Collect leaves. For older children, go exploring on a hike. Invent your own game. Create some sort of store. My son, when he was younger, had a library he created in his closet where we conveniently kept all of our books anyways. With library cards he made and a notebook that tracked books being checked out and cards with stamps on them that said when the books had to be returned. So fun. And my daughter, she had a post office in her closet where she made stamps and note cards and envelopes that she sold and a mailbox where we could put mail and mail things to each other and then she would pass them out to each of us. Oh my goodness, some of my fondest memories come from those experiences. Have a random box of assortment of craft items and just let them create anything that comes to mind. Create an obstacle course with random things around the house. Use Legos, but without the instructions to see what they can come up with. Find unique ways to use pool noodles. And for tweens and teens, let them create scavenger hunts, write stories or plays, go on hikes, take unique photos and then have an art show. Go swimming, take a bike ride, create something. Try different things like paint or clay or recycled items or all of the above. These sound amazing, right? The possibilities are literally endless. And one thing to keep in mind is if your child's not used to unstructured play, it may feel a little uncomfortable or awkward to them. And you too, for that matter. They may not know what to do right away. They may complain. Just try to resist the urge to jump in and fix it for them or feel like this just isn't for us. Maybe give them a few open-ended ideas at first and then let them take it from there. They'll figure it out eventually, I promise, and they'll really come to enjoy the time. The key is don't give up on it. Give it time to grow and develop naturally. Maybe it's only five minutes at the beginning. Don't have expectations of what success looks like. I promise you, if you prioritize it and are consistent with it, it will grow and it'll feel more natural and you'll start to see the benefits. And then sit back, watch them take root, see the joy of discovery that comes from it and cherish all of the memories these experiences will create. You got this. 
Want more of this? Let's stay connected. You can subscribe here. Also, make sure to scan the QR code to get weekly-ish visits from me and your email with tools and resources to help you get your kiddos and your family out of survival mode and on their way to thriving. I promise I will only send things I believe will be ultra, ultra valuable to you. So I'm so thrilled we got connected and I can't wait to see you again. Welcome to the Well-Equipped Family.